بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <clears throat> بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله we reached um, we reached now uh, al majlis al khamis ashar which is the 15th sitting alhamdulillah so we're halfway through uh, this book and halfway through ramadan alhamdulillah uh, and um, the uh, the chapter is entitled fi shurut al fitri bil mufattirati wa ma la yufattiru wa ma yajuzu li sa'im so just continuing on from uh, a brother was seems less than yesterday so we're cutting on with the uh, the things that we can break our fast with and the, and those things that don't break the fast and nullify it and going through the fiqh of of that at the moment so inshallah we'll continue now and with what the sheikh has explained from his book inshallah so he says alhamdulil hakim al khaliqi al adhim al halim al sadiqi ar rahim al karim al raziqi rafa al sab'a al taraiqi uh, بدون عمد ولا علائق وثبت الأرض بالجبال الشواحق تعرف إلى خلقه بالبراهين والحقائق وتكفل بأرزاق جميع الخلائق خلق الإنسان من ماء دافق وألزمه بشراع لوصل العلائق وسامحه عن الخطأ والنسيان فيما لا يوفق أحمده ما سكت ساكت ونطق ناطق وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة مخلص لا منافق وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله الذي عمت دعوته النازلة وشائق صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر القائم يوم الردة بالحزم اللائق وعلى أمر وعلى عمر مدوخ الكفار وفاته المغالق وعلى عثمان الذي مستحل حرمته إلا مارق وعلى علي الذي كان لشجاعته يسلك المضايق وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين كل منهم على من سواهم فائق وسلم تسليما so then the Sheikh uh, begins with the introduction or the rough translation is uh, All praise is due to Allah, the wise, the creator, the almighty, the patient, the truthful, the most merciful, the most bounteous Or the, the one who owns bounty, the provider He raised the seven ascending stairs without any pillars or hooks holding them And he stabilized the earth with the mountains like pegs he made himself known to the creatures by proofs and evidences and he guaranteed to provide for all his creatures. He created man from a gushing fluid and obligated the legislation on him and he forgave him what he did wrong out of error or forgetfulness. I will continue to praise him as long as one remains silent and as long as one continues to talk, i.e. meaning that he will praise him always. As in the Sheikh saying that he will praise him always. Then the Sheikh says, I also bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in, tr- in truth except Allah alone without any partners. A sincere testimony that is free from hypocrisy. And I also bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The one whose call includes every descending and ascending creature. Peace be upon him, or, uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. A praise and salutations be upon him um, and upon Abu Bakr, his companion, the one who stood firm on the day of the battle of apostasy, upon Umar, the exterminator of the disbelievers and the opener of the locks, upon Uthman, the one who non violates his right but the rebellion upon Ali, and also upon Ali, the one who took risks due to his courage, upon the Prophet ﷺ family members and his companions who preceded those who came after them in virtue. So then the Sheikh completes his introduction here and uh, we'll continue reading from where he's left off. So then the Sheikh says, Ikhwani, in al mufatirati sabiqata ma'ad al hayda wa al nifas wa hiya al jima'u wa al inzalu bil mubashara wa al aklu wa al shurbu wa ma bi ma'nahuma wa al uh, والحجامة والقيء لا يفطر صائما شيء منها 
only nullify the fast if one commits them with knowledge while remembering he is fasting and willingly uh, also with regards to uh, what was mentioned uh, last uh, um, uh, yesterday uh, with regards to uh, period and postpartum bleeding if you remember the lesson uh, also uh, with sexual relations direct sexual relations as in entering okay and um eating and drinking um by you know on, on on purpose and things like this and also with uh, when in detail brother was seeming in detail about what does actually nullify and doesn't yeah with regards to those issues so refer back to that lesson um so then the sheikh says he says with regards to what we mentioned he says that those issues are related to a person having knowledge of that remembering at the time when he's doing that particular action and also choosing it out of his own will he chooses so then the sheikh says these define the three uh, conditions which uh, set the stage for this uh, lesson um with regards to the fiqh of uh, fasting so let's continue he says he says the con- the first condition يسأل الشرط الأول أن يكون عالما فإن كان جاهلا لم يفطر لقوله تعالى في سورة البقرة ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا فقال الله قد فعلت وقوله تعالى وليس عليكم وليس عليكم جناح فيما أخطأتم به ولكن ما تعمدت قلوبكم وكان الله غفور رحيم وسواء كان جاهلا بالحكم الشرعي مثل أن يظن أن هذا هذا الشيء غير مفطر ويفعله أو جاهلا بالحال أي بالوقت مثل أن يظن أن الفجر لم يطلع فيأكل وهو طالع أو يظن أن الشمس قد غربت فيأكل وهي لم تغرب فلا يفطر فلا يفطر في ذلك كله لما لما في الصحيحين عن عدي بن حاتم رضي الله عنه قال لما نزلت هذه الآية حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود عمدت إلى إقالين أحدهما أسود والآخر أبيض فجعلتهما تحت وسادتي وجعلت أنظر إليهما فلما تبين لي الأبيض من الأسود أمسكت فلما أصبحت غدوت إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخبرته بالذي صنعت فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن وسادك إذا لعريض إن كان الخيط الأبيض والأسود وسادك إنما ذلك بياض النهار هذه وسواد الليلي فقد اكل فقد اكل عدي بعد طلوع الفجر ولم يمسك حتى تبين له الخيطان ولم يأمره ولم يأمره النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالقضاء لانه كان جاهلا بالحكم الكاريون ريدنج وين لي فينيش ان ابل ترانسليت ان شاء الله وفي صحيح البخاري من حديث اسماء أسماء بنت أبي بكر رضي الله عنهما قالت أفطرنا في أهد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم غيم ثم طلعت الشمس ثم طلعت الشمس ولم تذكر أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمرهم بالقضاء لأنهم كانوا جاهلين بالوقت ولو أمرهم بالقضاء لنقل لأنه مما توفر الدواء على نقله لأهميته بل قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية في رسالة حقيقة الصيام إنه نقل هشام بن عروة 
أحد رواة الحديث الحديث عن عبي عن عبيه وروة أنهم لم يؤمروا بالقضاء لكن متى علم ببقاء النهار وأن الشمس لم تغب أمسك حتى تغيب. So uh, that's a quite a long paragraph. But it goes through the first the first condition with regards to uh, what breaks the fast, right? So the Sheikh says the first condition. So to commit these nullifiers knowingly, if you so is having knowledge and you're doing it knowingly upon knowledge. So that's the first one. If you committed them unknowingly, you will not be held accountable for it because of Allah's statement informing about the supplication of the believers. O oh, our Lord, do not hold us accountable if we forget or make a mistake or made a mistake. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 286. Allah also said, I have indeed done that, collected by Muslim. Likewise, Allah's statement, there is nothing wrong on you regarding the things that you do by mistake, except the things that you do intentionally. And he, Allah, is oft forgiving, most merciful. Surah Al-Ahzab, uh, verse 5. So then the Sheikh says, this applies where the person is ignorant. So where the person is ignorant of the religious ruling connected to the issue, like a person who actually does not know that a certain thing nullifies the fast, or whether the person is, ign is ignorant of the time, like an, indiv like an individual who does not know uh, that dawn has entered. Thus he eats while dawn has appeared, also an, ind uh, an individual who thinks that the sun has set, so he eats although the sun has not yet actually set. None of these things will nullify your fast, the proof being what is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih, al uh, Sahih Muslim from the narration of Adi ibn Hatim radiallahu anhu, who said when the verse was revealed, eat and drink until the white thread light of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread darkness of night, then complete your fast till the nightfall. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 187 as mentioned previously as well. Then Adi radiallahu anhu said, I went and got me a white and a black thread. I got myself a white and a black thread and placed them under my pillow and continued to look at them until when I was able to differentiate between them. As in the ayah. Once I was able to differentiate, I would commence my fasting. When I reached the morning, I went to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and informed him about what I did. So the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Your pillow must be very wide if the white and black thread could be placed under it. The black and white threads are none other than the light of dawn and the darkness of night collected, collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So the Prophet Sallallahu explained it to him as in what the meaning of the ayah actually was. Surely Adi ate after the pain Aden's dawn and did not cease from eating until when he was able to differentiate between the two threads. But the Prophet ﷺ did not command him to make up his fast. So this is the important point that the Prophet ﷺ did not make him, uh, did not command him to make up the fast because of that error. Why? Because he he, he did it uh, upon it was upon ignorance. He, 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 he was not upon knowledge on that situation until the Prophet ﷺ clarified it to him. This is because he was ignorant of the religious ruling at that time, of course. So then the Sheikh says, um, also reported uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari from the narration of Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, radiallahu anhuma, who said we broke our fast during the time of the Prophet sallallahu on a cloudy day, thinking that the sun had set. Then after a while the sun appeared, collected by al-Bukhari. And that's quite common in, uh, in the UK anyway, in the United Kingdom anyway. Uh, is always is mostly cloudy, so you know this can be a bit of an issue. Yeah. So uh, she did. So the uh, so the sheikh says she did not mention that the Prophet ﷺ commanded them to make up that day, even though they are uh, they ate before sunset, or broke their fast before sunset. This is because they were ignorant of the time. Had they been commanded to make it up, it would have certainly been narrated and mentioned. But verily, this isn't an important issue that cannot be neglected. Rather, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah, um, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmahullah, mentioned in his book entitled The Reality of Fasting, that Hisham 
Ibn Urwa, one of the narrators of, of this hadith, narrated from his father that they were not commanded to make up the fasting of that day. So then the Shaykh says, however, if an individual is aware that the sun has not yet set, he must wait until it sets. Uh, that's quite, uh, we understand, we understand that, alhamdulillah. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, وَمِثْلُ ذَلِكَ لَوْ أَكَلَ بَعْضَ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ يَذُنُّ أَنَّ الْفَجْرَ لَمْ يَطْلُعْ فَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ قَدْ طَلَعَ فَصِيَامُهُ صَحِيحٌ وَلَا قَضَى عَلَيْهِ لِأَنَّهُ كَانَ جَاهِلًا بِالْوَقْتِ وَقَدْ أَبَاحَ اللَّهُ لَهُ الْأَكْلَ وَالشُّرْبَ وَالْجِمَاعَ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْفَجْرِ وَالْمُبَاحُ الْمَعْذُونُ فِيهِ لَا يُؤْمَرُ فَاعِلُهُ بِالْقَضَاءِ لَكِنْ مَا تَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُ وَهُوَ يَأْكُلُ أَوْ يَشْرَبُ أَنَّ الشَّمْسَ لَمْ تَغْرُبْ أَوْ أَنَّ الْفَجْرَ قَدْ طَلَعَ أَمْسَكَ وَلَفَذَ مَا فِي فَمِهِ إِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ شَيْءٌ لِزَوَالِ عُذْرِهِ حِينَئِذٍ So then the Sheikh says for example, so give some examples to us now. For example, if a person unknowingly ate after the rising of the dawn and then discovers afterwards that the dawn has risen, his fast is still valid and he does not have to make up that day because he was ignorant of the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it permissible for him to eat and drink until it becomes clear that dawn has appeared and that, we, that he has entered dawn. Fajr. So a person is not commanded to make up for something which he was legislatively allowed to do as well. So that uh, completes the first condition. We'll move on to the second condition now. So then the Shaykh says, he says, أَشَّرْتُ ثَانِي أَنْ يَكُونَ ذَاكِرًا فَإِنْ كَانَ نَاسِيًا فَصِيَامُهُ صَحِيحٌ وَلَا قَضَى عَلَيْهِ لِمَا سَبَقَ فِي آيَةِ الْبَقْرَةِ وَلِمَا رَوَاهُ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أنه قال من نسي وهو صائم فأكل أو شرب فليتم صومه فإنما أتعمه الله وسقاه متفق عليه واللفظ لمسلم فأمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بإتمامه دليل على صحته ونسبة إتعام الناس وسقيه إلى إلى الله دليل على عدم المؤاخذة عليه لكن متى ذكر أو ذكر أمسك ولفظ ما في فمه إن كان فيه شيء لزوال عذره حينئذ ويجب على من رأى صائما يأكل أو يشرب أو يشرب, أو يشرب أن ينبه أن ينبهه لقوله تعالى وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى. So then the Sheikh says the second condition that a person must remember he is fasting. If a person eats due to forgetfulness, his fast is still valid and he does not have to make it up. The proof for this is what is previously mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah as well as the hadith which which is which was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever ate while fasting out of forgetfulness or drank then he should complete his fast for verily it is Allah who fed him and gave him drink collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, commanded to complete the fast although a person ate or drank is proof that the fast is still valid and attributing uh, eating and drinking to Allah is proof that the fasting person will not be held accountable for it however whenever an individual remembers or is reminded that he is fasting he should stop eating and spit out whatever is in his mouth because the excuse of forgetfulness uh, because the excuse of forgetfulness is no longer present and no longer applies likewise it is a must upon whoever sees the fasting person eating or drinking to remind him. Based on Allah's statement uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, help one another upon good and piety. 
Suratul Ma'ida, verse 5. So that concludes the second condition and we start the third condition. So then the Shaykh says the third condition. Ashartu thalithu an yakuna muhtaran ay mutanawilan lil mufattiri bikhtiyarihi wa iradatihi fa in kana mukrahan fasiyamuhu sahihun wa la qada alayhi li anna Allah subhanahu rafa al-hukma amman kafara mukrahan wa qalbuhu mutma'innum bil-iman faqala ta'ala من كفر بالله من بعد إيمانه إلا من أكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان ولكن من شرح بالكفر صدر فعليهم غضب من الله ولهم عذاب عظيم فإذا رفع الله حكم الكفر عمن أكره عليه فما دونه أولى ولقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تجاوز عن أمة الخطأ والنسيان وما استكره عليه رواه ابن ماجة والبيهقي وحسنه النووي فلو أكره, الر... فلو... فلو أكره الرجل زوجته على الوطء وهي صائمة فصيامها صحيح ولا قضى عليها ولا يحل له إكراهها على الوطء وهي صائمة إلا إن صامت تطوعا بغير إذنه وهو حاضر ولو طار إلى جوف الصائم غبار أو دخل فيه شيء بغير اختياره أو تمضمض أو, أو استنشق فنزل إلى جوفه شيء من الماء بغير اختياره فصيامه صحيح ولا قضاء عليه سدان أم the Shaykh says the third condition, breaking one's fast willingly, meaning he chooses out of his own free will to break his fast. He does it intentionally. Um, however, if a fasting person is forcefully compelled to break the fast, his fast is still valid under that circumstance. Surely Allah has pardoned the individual who is compelled to dis, uh, disbelieve as long as, as long as his heart is at rest with true faith or that he, in his heart is believing and he has Iman As in the ayah of the Quran Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Whoever disbelieved in Allah After his belief Except him who is forced there to And whose heart is at rest with faith So you know when you, you see, You've you probably heard stories You've seen situations Or maybe experienced in, um, As well yourselves Or heard with regards to Like where you're compelled Where somebody's forcing you to do something You know an ex easy example is Imagine uh, somebody uh, a, a person um, Gets hold of uh, another person who's fasting and forces food and drink down his mouth, you know, uh, his fasting is still valid in that situation. Or if somebody was imprisoned or captured or whatever was forced uh, uh, to say, uh, to denounce their religion, then, uh, and even though in his heart he's believing in Iman, he hasn't lost his Iman in his heart, but he's been forced and because of his maybe his weakness or because of. Uh, um, fear or whatever that he, he says it, then he doesn't. He's not. He doesn't lose his iman. So uh, that's the example given from the Quran as well, which we just read. The Sheikh's given the example to us. So then the Sheikh says, "Indeed, Allah has forgiven my ummah the wrong things which they do out of error, forgetful, uh, forgetfulness, or compulsion." That's narrated by Ibn Majah Al Bayhaqi, and Al Nawawi graded it sound. Uh, and Al Albani, uh, Rahmullah, graded it to be authentic in Sahih Ibn Majah in his book, Sahih Ibn Majah. Then the Sheikh says, if a man forced his wife to have intercourse with him, for example, while she was fasting, her fast is still valid. She does not have to make it up, although it is not permissible for him to compel her while she's fasting, unless she she's observing the supererogatory fasting without his permission while he's present. So obviously, if, if a woman, in this example, it's obligatory fasting, if, if the fast is an obligation, like the uh, fasting of Ramadan, then this situation occurs, then, you know, she doesn't have to make it up. It's not, she hasn't, uh, her fast hasn't been broken. Uh, but um, if it's any other type of fasting outside of Ramadan, which is uh, nafila, uh, or supererogatory in the English uh, word of it, then, um, you know, uh, then she needs to seek permission from her husband to uh, fast, super, super fast.
Also, the Sheikh says, if dust or anything flew into a person's mouth, reaching his stomach unwillingly or passes through his throat while sniffing the water and rinsing out his mouth, for example, joining wudu, for example, his fast is still valid. He does not have to make it up. So, uh, let's carry on. So then the Sheikh says, um, وَلَا يُفْتِرُ um, وَلَا يُفْتِرُ أَصَائِمُ بِالْكُحْلِ وَالدَّوَائِ في عينه ولو وجد طعمه في حلقه لأن ذلك ليس بأكل ولا شرب ولا بمعناهما ولا يفتر ولا يفتر بتقطير دواء في أذنه أيضا ولا بوضع دواء في جرح ولو وجد طعم دواء ولو وجد طعم الدواء في حلقه لأن ذلك ليس أكلا ولا شربا ولا بمعنى الأكل والشرب. So then um, the Sheikh says also for example applying eyeliner you know the ithm al uh, applying that eyeliner or eye, eye drops will not nullify your fast even if you found it even if you tasted it in your throat for example because they are neither food nor drink, nor do they function as food or drink, as the brother Wasim uh, went through uh, yesterday in quite a lot of detail with regards to uh, what constitutes that as well. Uh, and then the Sheikh says, likewise, using uh, eye, eye drops and ear drops or putting medicine in your, uh, on, on a wound. So if you put medicine or apply medicine on a wound of yours for treatment, it will not break your fast. Even if you found the taste in your throat because they are neither food nor drink and they do not function as food, and, uh, food or drink as mentioned earlier. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh continues and he says, قَالَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بْنُ تَيْمِيَةِ في في رسالة حقيقة الصيام ونحو ونحن نعمل نعلم أنه ليس في الكتاب والسنة ما يدل على الإفطار بهذه الأشياء فعلمنا أنها ليست مفطرة قال فإن الصيام من من دين المسلمين الذي يحتاج إلى معرفة خاص والعام فلو كانت هذا الأمور مما حرمه الله ورسوله في الصيام ويفسد الصوم أو يفسد الصوم بها لكان هذا مما يجب على الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بيانه ولو ذكر ذلك لعلمه الصحابة وبلغوه الأمة كما بلغوا سائر الشرع فلما فلما لم ينقل أحد من أهل العلم عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في ذلك لا حديثا صحيحا ولا ضعيفا ولا مسندا ولا مرسلا علم أنه لم يذكر شيئا من ذلك والحديث المروي في الكحل يعني أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر بالإثمد المروح عند النوم وقال ليتقه الصائم ضعيف رواه أبو داود في السنن ولم يروه غيره قال أبو داود قال لي يحيى بن معين هذا حديث منكر وقال شيخ الإسلام أيضا والأحكام التي تحتاج الأمة إلى معرفتها إلى معرفتها لا بد أن يبينها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بيانا عاما ولا بد أن تنقلها الأمة فإذا, فإذا انتفى هذا علم أن, أن هذا ليس من دينه انتهى كلامه رحمه الله وهو كلام رسيل مبني على براهين واضحة وقوائد ثابتة So then um, the Sheikh says he says he quotes Sheikh uh, Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, رحمه الله said in his book entitled The Reality of Fasting we know that there is no proof from the book or the sunnah that indicates that the above mentioned things break the fast. Therefore, we know that they do not break the fast. Then he said, indeed, fasting is from the religious acts of worship, which every Muslim is obliged to have knowledge of. If these things were from that which Allah and his messenger have made impermissible upon the fasting person because they corrupt the fast, then it would have surely been obligatory for the messenger uh, of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to clarify it to us, and if it were mentioned to the companions, 
uh, if, and if it was mentioned, the companions would have known of it and they would have conveyed it to the Ummah as they have conveyed the other acts of worship to us. But since it was the, the case that no one conveyed it from the people of knowledge, reporting it from the Prophet wasallam, not an authentic or weak narration and neither a connected nor disconnected narration, with this it becomes known that nothing of the sort was mentioned. As for the narration reported about the permissibility of wearing the ithmid kuhl, the eyeliner, the black eyeliner in the night when sleeping and forbade it for the fasting person, this narration is weak. Abu Dawood said, Yahya ibn Ma'in, um, uh, Rahmullah informed me that this hadith is munkar, meaning a narration in which a weak narrator opposes the reliable narrators. So within the chain, there's a weak link. And it's munkar. So then Sheikh al-Islam said, the rulings that the Muslims need to know regarding their religion, it is a must that they be clarified by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and confirmed by his companions therefore if there is not any clarification or if there isn't a clarification from the Prophet وسلم, and the companions did not convey these matters then it must be known that these things are not from our religion they're not from the religion of Islam this statement of Ibn Taymiyyah is very strong and it is based on clear evidence and firm principles so um, then the Sheikh says then the Shaykh continues, moves on, moves on to explaining the fiqh of fasting, and he says, "Wala yuftiru bi zawq al-taami ida lam yablahu, wala bi sham al-tayib al-tibi wal bakhuri." Lakin la yistanshiqu dukhan al-bakhur li anna lahu ajzaan tasgudu, farubma wasala ila al-maidata. إلى إلى المعدة شيء منه ولا يفطر بالمضمضة والاستنشاق لكن لا يبالغ في ذلك لأنه ربما تهرب شيء من الماء إلى جوفه وعن لقيت ابن صبرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أسبغ الوضوء وخلل بين الأصابع وبالغ في فلسطين شاق إلا أن تكون صائما رواه أبو داود والنسائي وصححه ابن خزيمة. so let's uh, translate that then. so then the sheikh says likewise um, tasting food. so tasting food without swallowing uh, swallowing it or smelling oils or fragrances this does not nullify the fast. but he should not sniff incenses like bakhur or a smoky incense like frankincense, bakhur and the likes of that because it may go through the throat and into the stomach likewise rinsing the mouth out and sniffing water in order to clean the nostrils do not nullify the fast however the fasting person should not sniff uh, uh, forcefully should have sniff it forcefully uh, uh, the water up into the nostrils because eventually it'll, it'll go into your throat and reach your stomach because of the passage and the way the nose is connected to the throat um, uh, and in order to avoid the water from passing through the throat and reaching the stomach. The proof for this is the narration of Laqit ibn Sabira uh, radiallahu anhu who reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said perform ablution perfectly and use your fingers to clean between your uh, use your finger to uh, use your fingers to uh, clean between your fingers and sniff the water up high in, into your nostrils Unless you are fasting. So uh, uh, there's evidence for that at the ending of the hadith. Unless you are fasting. Nar narrated by Abu Dawood and An Nasai ibn Khuzayma. One of the hadith scholars created it to be authentic uh, and also authentic, uh, authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani in Sahih al-Jami. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَلَا يُفْتِرُوا بِالتَّسَوُّكِ بَلْ هُوَ سُنَّةٌ لَهُ فِي النَّهَارِ وَآخِرِهِ كَالْمُفْتِرِينَ لِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ لَوْ لَا أَنْ أَشَقَّ عَلَى أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرْتُهُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ إِنْدَ كُلِّ صَلَاةِ رواه الجماعة 
وهذا عام في الصائمين وغيرهم في جميع الأوقات وقال عامر بن ربيعة رضي الله عنه رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لا أحصي يتسوق وهو صائم رواه أحمد وأبو داود وترمذي So then the Sheikh says, um, and also, likewise, using the miswak, uh, the stick to brush your teeth will not break your fast. As a matter of fact, it is recommended in the beginning of the day and the end of the day, whether one is fasting or not. This is based on the Prophet's statement, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, had it not been because I do not want to make it hard upon my ummah, I would have commanded them to use a miswak before each prayer. That we, obviously, we know that this is a sunnah, isn't it, uh, uh, between each prayer. Uh, and before each prayer is a sunnah, uh, but this is uh, with regards to um, something that's fard, um, uh, and that's a nafal, yeah, that if you do it, you get extra reward, uh, but the Prophet makes a distinction here and clarifies that, you know, as he said, had it not been because I do not want to make it hard upon my ummah, I would have commanded them to use a miswak before each prayer, as in I would have made an obligation upon them, uh, graded, uh, and that's been gra- graded authentic by Al-Albani in Sahih Al-Tirmidhi. Uh, this hadith, and the Sheikh says, this hadith is general, therefore it is applied to both the fasting person and the one who is not fasting at any time. And then he says also, uh, uh, Amir ibn Rabia said, I saw the Prophet a number of times using the miswak while fasting, narrated by Ahmad and Abu Dawood and the Tirmidhi al-Albani graded it to be weak in Irwa al-Ghalil. But there's some footnotes you can look uh, here at the bottom if you want to research that for yourself. So... So then the Sheikh continues and he says, وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لِسَائِمْ تَطْهِيرُ أَسْنَانِهِ بِالْمَعْجُونِ لِأَنَّ لَهُ نُفُوذًا قَوِيًّا وَيُخْشَى أَنْ يَتَسَرَّبْ مَعَ رِيقِهِ إِلَى جَوْفِ وَفِي السِّوَاقِ غُنْيَةٍ عَنْهُ So then the Sheikh says, the fasting person should not use a toothpaste to clean his mouth because it has a very strong sway and may possibly sway with your saliva to your uh, stomach may mix and uh, uh, arrive to your stomach therefore stick to the miswak and that is sufficient for you then the shaykh continues and he says وَيَجُوزُ لِسَائِمْ أَنْ يَفْعَلَ مَا يُخَفِّفُ عَنْهُ شِدَّةَ الْحَرِّ وَلَا تَشِي كَالْتَبَرُّدِ بِالْمَاءِ وَنَحْمَهُ لِمَا رَوَى مَالِكٌ وَأَبُوْ دَاوُودَ عَنْ بَعْضِ أَصْحَابِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالأرج اسم موضع يصب الماء على رأسه وهو صائم من العتش أو من الحر وبل بن عمر رضي الله عنه عنهما ثوبا فألقاه على نفسه وهو صائم وكان لأنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه حجر منقور يشبه الحوض إذا وجد الحر وهو صائم نزل فيه وكأنه والله أعلم مملوء ما مملوء بما أو مملوء ما وقال الحسن والقال الحسن لا بأس بالمضمضة والتبرد لصائمي ذكر هذا الآثار البخاري في صحيح so then um, the Sheikh says also it is permissible for the fasting person to do that which will ease the severity of heat and thirst. For example, um, taking a cold shower and that which is similar to that. The proof for, for it is what uh, is narrated by Malik and Abu Dawood from uh, from some of the companions uh, companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said I saw the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Urj um, uh, at Urj and it just mentions here uh, Al-Urj yeah? so Al-Urj is a, a, a name of a place pouring water on his head while fasting due to the uh, due to thirst and heat and Sheikh Al-Bani graded this narration to be authentic in Sahih, Sahih Abi Dawood Likewise, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu soaked his garment with water and put it on while fasting. Also, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu used to have a carved out rock or stone, a large stone which resembled a pool. When he felt very hot while fasting, he would enter it. 
And Hassan al-Basri also said, there is nothing wrong with rinsing the mouth and cooling down the body while fasting. Al-Imam al-Bukhari reported these aforementioned narrations in his authentic collection with disconnected chains. See the Book of Fasting section. So if you want to refer that, you can refer to the Book of Fast, the section on uh, the chapter on Book of Fasting or the Book of Fasting. The ritual body wash of the one observing the fast. So then the Sheikh continues and we've reached the end of the lesson and the Sheikh says, he says, Ikhwani, tafaqahu fi deen illahi li ta'abudu Allah ala basiratin fa innahu la yastawi alladheena ya'lamuna wa alladheena la ya'lamun wa man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi deen Allahumma faqihna fi deenina warzuqna al-amal bihi wa thabbitna alayhi wa tawaffana mu'mineen wa alhiqna bisalihin wa aghfir lana wa li walidina wa li jami'i al-muslimin wa birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in so then the shaykh says O oh my brothers um, seek to understand Allah's book in order that you may worship him upon clear insight and knowledge for, uh, for verily or for indeed those who know those who know and have knowledge are not equal to those who do not know and have knowledge and if Allah loves goodness for his slave he gives him understanding of the religion he gives him much understanding of the religion if Allah wants good for his slave he gives him Understanding of his deen. Then the Shaykh uh, closes as he uh, customarily does uh, with a supplication for all of us. And uh, he makes a supplication for himself and all of us and the Muslims. And he says, with a rough translation, uh, which is, Oh Allah, give us understanding of this religion and help us to implement it in our lives. Keep us firm upon it. Take our souls while we are believers and join us with, and join us with the pious ones forgive us and our parents and all the muslims with your mercy for verily you are the most merciful may the peace and blessing salutations uh, be uh, of allah be upon the prophet sallallahu and upon his family members and his companions so alhamdulillah we conclude the lesson and inshallah we will continue tomorrow uh, around similar time brother wasim will take over inshallah and uh, we'll see you there tomorrow bi idhnillahi ta'ala subhan اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته